All right, well, we're staying with football here on the Sportsmax Zone. And only three match weeks remain in the regular season of the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League. And there is very little to separate the teams as we close in on confirming the qualifiers for the playoffs. Mount Pleasant have a five-point lead atop the table with 50 points, but right below them is a four-team deadlock as Tivoli Gardens, Portmore United, Arnett Gardens and Cavalier all have 45 points and are separated only by goal difference. And it's the same from 6th to 8th, with Waterhouse, Montego Bay United and Don Beholden all on 34 points. Waterhouse clinging to the 6th and the last playoff spot due to a superior goal difference. Well, with that being said, these Match Week 24 fixtures have a lot riding on them. So on Sunday, we'll have Portmore United up against Ver United. That match will be live on Sportsmax. Mount Pleasant, they play Annette Gardens, also live on your home of champions. Treasure Beach, they will be seeing Cavalier Waterhouse up against Don Beholden. And Montego Bay United, they play Malines United. Now moving to Monday. Humble Lion up against Lime Hall Academy. That match, you can catch the action on Sportsmax 2 and Tivoli Gardens versus Harborview live on Sportsmax 2. Well, with us to preview these pivotal clashes is our in-house football analyst, Lige Williams. Lige, well, you're on set with us now and we're down to the wire. It's business time. Let's talk about what to expect which is the most important upcoming fixture for that sixth spot? I think it has to be the two teams that are deadlocked on 34 points that are coming up against each other, yep. Waterhouse and Dumbo Holding. I think that's going to be a really, really important game for both teams. Uh, Waterhouse are coming off a really impressive win. They got some goals finally, something that they haven't been doing well. And they, they won 4 2. There were some defensive lapses. That's not what we're used to from Waterhouse for the past couple of weeks, but they got the victory. Um, and most importantly, they have a really, really superior goal difference to the rest of the team. So I think that would fill them with confidence going into this contest. But then again, all of the teams are, as I've said previously, on a similar standing. I think that they all have similar bouts of quality. Maybe I've always edged towards Montego Bay United getting that six spot, but I think all three teams are really similar in terms of the quality that they possess in all phases of the game. So it's going to be really tight, and then this weekend is going to be even another, another part of the roller coaster that we're expecting <laughs> as the season carries on. Do you remember any of the seasons coming down to this wire, Lance? I feel like this one is for you. It's hard, it's hard, not, not with so many teams battling for that teams. last playoff spot. I think usually you might find two teams battling for one spot but to find three teams battling for one spot and three teams on the identical number of points battling for one three spot. Three matches left. I can't remember seeing this. I really can't. The, the, the year that Harborview won, that would be 2021, mm -hmm. they had a really, really close battle with two other teams. I know Tivoli was right there as well. It wasn't as close as this where yeah. it's just goal difference but I know it was, it might have actually been just as close but it wasn't as close at this point so yeah, yeah it's, it's an anomaly it's not something that we see very often because mm -hmm. all three of those teams are also nine wins seven draws seven losses they're practically identical it's just the goal scoring that's tipping the scale right now maybe the amount of goals that Montego Bay United and Dumbo have been conceding and their lack of goal threat I think Waterhouse's defense is the reason why they've pushed up to a 11 goal difference because as I've mentioned before attacking wise they haven't been that good to be honest but they've been pushing through and they've been doing well enough to sustain themselves but i think that game at the waterhouse mini stadium on sunday is going to be a very big one yeah well we're in late march now uh, can you remember that late december done beholden victory over waterhouse two goals to one i think it was and if it is that anything has changed since then between the two teams because you would want to look at the last meeting that they had which done beholden won but that was three months ago and and the teams are probably playing differently now in March than they did in, in late December. Would that result, you know, give you any indicators as to what may happen in this important fixture? I, I don't think so because, as you mentioned, the, the teams have changed, especially the dynamics of each team. Uh, for better and for worse, in either case, I think. I don't think Waterhouse, coincidentally, are as good as they were in December. They don't have the same fluidity, especially going forward. They might be a little bit better defensively, but I think 
in terms of the balance that they have going forward and going back, it's not as good as it was then. And for Dumbo, I think that they've gotten a bit better. They've gotten, they, they're under new tutelage under Lenny Hyde, so it was always going to take some time for them to get accustomed to the type of football that he wants to play. And as the games go on, I'm not saying that it's perfect all the time because we've seen that they've struggled on several occasions to break down teams. But when they do score goals, they score quite a lot of them. We've seen them score four on several occasions, but then uh, the next week they'll go on and you know have a nil all draw or something of the sort. So I, I, I do think that Dumbo Holding, they have their itch issues, but if both teams are playing at their best capacity, I, I do think that Dumbo Holding has improved the most since that December meeting. Okay, well, that, that's an important narrative then, because if they won in December, and you think they are better now than they were in December, then on that analysis, they should beat Waterhouse on, on the weekend. No, but it, 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 there's other things to consider as well, <laughs> because you have to consider the venue of the game as yes, well, yes. where the game will be played, which would be in at the Waterhouse Mini Stadium. Waterhouse are, are known for a lot of rampant support, and they do support their teams they very well. They can G up the players. Yeah, yeah. and, and Dumbo Holding don't have a very good record when playing away from home. I mean, they, they haven't played most of their games at home, their home games, but when they're playing in these hostile environments, you think back to, say, for instance, when they were to go and play Mount Pleasant, when they're going, going to play Arnett Gardens, for example, they don't generally do well over the past couple of seasons because they have a generally young squad. So a lot of factors can play into it. It's not just quality of teams or the names or the tactics because there's a lot of psychological edges that can be given just based off of the atmosphere in the ground and things like that. So there's a lot to consider. But I do think based off of the quality and form of the team, I'd give Dumbo in the slight edge. All right, can we talk quickly about the top two um, spots? Because those are the two positions that would automatically qualify for the, the, the semis and they wouldn't have to go through the first phase of the playoffs. We've spoken a lot on this show about the work that Jerome Waite has done with Tivoli Gardens and they continue to show themselves as a potent team. Currently number two behind Mount Pleasant, by far the most prolific scoring team and by far the team boasting the best goal difference, um, are they poised to make it a top two? I think that's also very difficult to say because just like how there are three teams deadlocked for the sixth <laughs> spot, there are four teams deadlocked for from second. second to fifth. So there's so many teams that can get there. It's just a matter of goal difference at this point. But you did mention the goal difference of Tivoli Gardens, which is quite substantially higher than everyone else. but it's going to be difficult. I think that's going to change week on week as it has been for quite some time. But yeah, Jerome Waite is doing a splendid job. It's not very easy to score six goals in this league and they and their opponents on Monday did it pretty comfortably um, last game week. So they're a team to look out for. But in terms of a clash that could decide a lot for the top two, I think this Mount Pleasant versus Arnett Gardens game on Sunday is going to be a really entertaining watch. Arnett Gardens are peaking and playing some really good football right now and they're going to come up against the best team in the league, in my opinion, on Sunday at, at Mount Pleasant as well. So I think tactically, that's going to be a really intriguing clash. I, I, I don't think we'll have all the time to get into all the tactics that I would want, but you know, hopefully on Monday we can get into that. Yeah, yeah. Just one, one more thing on the Tivoli performances though, because I saw with Justin Dunn had a hat-trick last weekend and he had gone several match weeks without scoring after taking the lead as the, the golden boot leader from early in the season, but probably a good sign for Tivoli that he is finding his scoring boots back again at, at this critical point in the season. Yeah, and there was a little tweak of his positioning. So often we've seen him being deployed on the wings and it's changed up a bit now. He's being deployed centrally, or he was deployed centrally against Malines and his runs and his interchanging with Anthony Nelson, I think was really lethal for Tivoli, as well as what they were doing on the wing. And it's with Tivoli, no other team plays the formation or the tactical balance that they have. So it's always going to be a mismatch unless a team prepares for them specifically throughout the week if they're going to use their similar system. So Tivoli is always going to be a really tough team for anybody. We saw that when they came up against Mount Pleasant, only two 1 0 victories. That was really close. Two, both of those games were extremely close. So there's a lot to learn from those games in terms of what we'll see against other big teams. So, yeah, a lot to look out for for Tivoli going into the playoffs. And mm. I've been really high on them all season. I wouldn't be surprised if they find their way, not only in the semi-finals down the line, but even in the final as, as well. Yeah. yeah, and I want to get a quick comment from you on Portmore season, because right now they have the best unbeaten streak in the league, 16 matches undefeated. And 
they have always been there or thereabouts during the season. They have never been leaders, or they haven't been leaders, I don't think, since the start of the season. But they've been right there, and they keep getting the job done. And uh, they have the know-how to winning championships, even though this this current team is um, doesn't have too many players who have won the championship or before, if any at all. But it's a team that you can't underestimate because of their their traditional strength and know-how in winning championships. Well, yeah, they have Rudolf Austin, who I believe has won the, the right. league, but that was a very long time ago. That and, was and before he, he went overseas to yeah, play. Yeah, and he hasn't, he hasn't, he didn't play in the last game. I think they're saving his legs for the playoffs. But yeah. <laughs> I think with Portmore, they have a few attacking issues. I think it's a similar issue to what Stats would have had in the Manning Cup under the same coach, Philip Williams. I, I think at times their attacking play can be a bit slow, but defensively they're so solid, they can cause a problem for any team and they can slow down any team. But even if we take into consideration their last game against Cavalier, Cavalier hit the post three times in that game. And Cavalier in the first game against Portmore, Portmore also won 1-0. Cavalier had the better of chances in that game as well. So they're riding their luck a bit. I'm not saying that they're not a quality team, but I think attacking-wise, given the players that they have at their disposal, I think they need to or should be a little bit more free-flowing. I think it looks a bit bogged down, especially in possession, but they're a very good defensive team, so they're going to make it difficult for everyone. But I think in the playoffs, that can make them very dangerous, but I'm not quite sure if it's enough to overcome some really good attacking teams like Mount Pleasant, Tivoli and Arnett even. But Liz, you know, I'm hoping after this weekend we can no longer just be speaking about there's the, the game is anybody's want to win. It's so open right now. We we'll can't still be, tell. trust me, on Monday we'll still be in the same position. <laughs> but we've been talking about this I for know, quite but, some time. It's like we have me. no clarity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that will change on Monday's show, trust me. So when? <laughs> after game week 26. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, what's for sure, viewers, is you have all the reason to keep it locked to Sports Max. Because, of course, uh, we want to see how this ends up. We've been talking about deadlock, everybody being tied on the same number of points, people only being ahead of another one because of goal difference. So keep it locked. Let's see what happens by the end of match week 26. And our show is about to get hotter because we have Naomi Cohen sitting right on the side set. She'll be joining us on the main set very, very soon for our special segment, Celebrity Knock. Stay with us.